Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. You know, we're winding down this H project. There's just a few minor things we have to get back, uh, get done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to uh, move these hubs in. I explained to you why I don't like those hubs outside so far. I'm not concerned about turning over on hillsides or anything like that. I've been on tricycle or row crop or these narrow front end tractors my whole life on hillsides, on flat everywhere, you know, so it doesn't really bother me. But I need to try, uh, move those hubs in. So first order of business, I've got to take these wheel weights off. I don't normally do these without being under my overhead hoist. I'll go ahead and do them underneath the overhead hoist so I can put a, a little a small chain on them or something like that and then support them and everything. I don't have to worry about dropping them. But I have to be real careful in here in the shed uh, simply because I don't want to chip my concrete floor or anything. And I've got, I'm have got i not wearing steel toe shoes. So I need to be real careful. So I've just wrapped a rope around this and I'm going to be taking the nuts off from the back side and when that comes loose I should be able to drive it out and then just slowly lower it from the other side of the tire. That's going to give me access then to these guys here. I can't I can't quite get on them the way I want to get on them so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take this off right here. It's going to allow me a little more access to these. The other so I'm going to go ahead and back off these inch and length nuts. And you know, like they say, get a bigger hammer. Like I say, these wheel weights ain't heavy. I just don't want to smash a toe. Well, there we go. Didn't get a smashed finger, didn't get a smashed toe. Never even cracked my concrete. Like I say, they're not that heavy. I'd probably say they're about like a sack of cement, 80 pounds or something like that. It's not a big deal. But uh, working for them from the other side, you can't hardly control them without a helper, you know what I mean? So now I'm going to go back to business of uh, working these guys loose here. This should break loose here fairly easily, but the key way in the actual hub moving on the axle is going to be a challenge. I guess I should have told you uh, before I got started, but I got the uh, draw bar and the back end of the tractor supported with a stack of 6 by 6s and also a railroad jack. You can tell I sprayed some penetrating oil around these last couple of weeks or so ago. I've got everything on the back end soaked in penetrating oil. Two on the other side. I'm thinking with all four of these bolts out of here, that lower half should be loose and I should be able to drive it out, leaving only the top portion and the keyway rusted in place. Before I drive them out or go any farther, I'm going to shine these up a little bit here. Boy, that's really good. This is really a very good design on the International's part. Massey Harris's are entirely much more difficult than this. The way this breaks apart right here when you take half that bottom slug out by driving that over, it just breaks that seal loose right here on that top half. You see how that tire just cocked as soon as I got that uh, that lower slug? I should be able to take a pry bar and I should be able to slide this over this way, clean up everything, and uh, very carefully uh, reassemble everything just like it is. Now, like I said, it looks good on paper. Whether it works like that, I don't know. Now, for the few of you out there that are, are really sure of what you're looking at, what you're looking at right now is a, a recipe for a disaster if you're not used to working around this stuff. I normally do everything from overhead. I don't do it by hand like this, but circumstances such as they are, that's why I'm doing it. But if you notice, I've got the 6x6s six six underneath here. You can see i got my 6x6 six six and i got a railroad jack back here. So I've got all the stability that I need. This is just tremendously heavy whenever you're working with one guy. And working up against a machine like I've got behind, if this was to topple over and get off of the end of that axle, you can get crushed very easily against the wall of the building 
or another machine or something like that. So that's why I like to do them from overhead. In a case like this, I don't have the choice. You just have to have your wits about yourself and be careful. Now, I don't want that riding on that, uh, that inner hub, so I'm going to have to pull it out just a little bit. But I want to drive that locking half of the hub, I want to drive it in right there so I can hold this in this position. Okay, now I don't have to worry too awfully much. So I'm going to start a bolt in there. Now I've got to pry this out just a little bit. Okay, with that right there, I'm going to go ahead and take the other two bolts, buff those all up and get them uh, coated with anti-seas, and go ahead and put the other two bolts in, then take the two temporary ones I put in, take those out, clean those, and uh, clean that up with, uh, and see, cover them with anti-seas, and put all four of them in. Uh, but i got to shine up the axle. In the meantime, you already saw me do that on the inside, so now i got to do it on the outside. So I'll go ahead and shine up that axle, clean those bolts, put that all back together. Actually looking pretty good. Now I got to clean up the bolts, panty seize the bolts, go ahead and put them back on there. And of course, there's a perfectly shaped wasp nest right in there between the wheel weights and the rim. Okay, from back here in the back, you can see the notably different stance having those rear wheels in. Uh, pretty close to the hub, it's about as far as they can go, about a half inch to spare. Uh, but what a difference that's going to make when clearance back out in the woods and up even next to sheds and other pieces of equipment. The axle themselves are almost perfectly flush with the outside edge of the tires. So if you're missing something with the tire, you know you're not going to hook the axle on there. i tell you something I learned, well, I learned a lot about this because, like I said, I'm not a big international guy yet. This has is, this is, uh, been a good one. It's been a fun one. I've really enjoyed it. But uh, Randall Watts uh, comments all the time on my channel, and he's obviously a, a quite the farmall fan and quite knowledgeable on the farmalls. And I'd seen these Zerk fittings over here, but never really thought about, about how important that they might be. But remember I told you about having those wheels out so far on those long axles, you're putting extra stress, extra stress and strain on those outer bearings. Randall Watts brought up a very good point. Show me that these two grease fittings you can see right here on the very tips of the axles, right there on top of the bearing housing, those two uh, two grease fittings, every so often you're supposed to pump in you know, several, uh, several pumps of grease in them, simply because those bearings should rely on the 80 90 that's in the rear end to get up in there and roll out and give lubrication to those bearings while you're in use. Now, if you're on a hillside, you know, and you're going this direction for a while, and everything will run to that side and then go back the other direction and runs to the other side. You know, I can see how they'll get lubricated, but uh, like he said, they have a tendency to run a little bit dry. So, you always want to pump just two or three shots in there um, if you're in using the tractor for, you know, for extended use. You know what I mean? So, that was a good point. I was glad I saw them there, but I didn't really know. Uh, how important that they might be. 
Okay, the next order of business for this old gal will be to get the wheel weights back on. Like I said, I'll probably use a little, the small Kubota loader tractor to hold them up, swing them in, let me attach them, and then put the uh, original tank back on. Original tank back on, hook up fuel line, put sheet metal back on, and this guy's ready, ready to go back to work. So uh, that's good enough for now. So adjusting the hub or rear wheel spacing on the Falmar H is coming to a close. This track man party cool. Hey, I am out of here, guys.